Welcome back, everybody. We're in game three here for Cloud9 versus 100 Thieves. It is tied up. We're still here with APA Inspired and Azale, so we're going to be covering the draft here. Thoughts, guys, on what adaptations? We mentioned the Nasus pretty heavily. Do we even think it's going to get through the bands? Um, 100 Thieves should let it through. It looked pretty OP. Yeah. You're on blue yeah. side. That's true. I feel like if Quiz willing to play the Garen, you're most definitely willing to play the Nasus. So I'm interested to see if they take a B1 or if C9 ends up just banning it. Yeah, I mean, I think it does become really interesting, right? Because it's like, you know, from JoJo's point of view, he might think, well, it, you know, Garen's a good answer. He just played it badly. I could play Garen into it. So it's always interesting to kind of, you know, see what the pros think coming out of a game like that, where there's misplays. It's kind of hard to judge sometimes. You know, was it the champion or was it execution? And sometimes I feel like it was the champion, but pros get a little bit stubborn and, and it's, maybe it's an ego thing. They're like, no, 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 just let it through. I could beat it. So since C9's on red side for the first time in the series, they've been smolder all three games. I think, in all honesty, FlyQuest and Quad just completely terrified <laughs> of the smolder now. Nasus is banned, so 100 Thieves are going to ban it on blue, which that obviously hurts you a fair bit in draft. If you're not willing to play it, you're going to have to ban it on both sides. Yeah, and I'm imagining that Ziggs is going to be the first pick. It's been going through 400 Thieves. And the Kai'Sa ban for sure. Yeah. They want to take the Ziggs. Surely C9 is willing to ban it here. Ivern is also going to be up and available, so I mean, if you're 100 Thieves, the Lilia ban, yeah, that hurts you a little bit. But River can play pretty much anything, and I think they'll just go Ziggs or Iron. Will be Azir. Okay, so I assume it's gonna be a Ziggs first yeah. pick. I can imagine. So if they go Ziggs, are we not just then kind of getting them stuck in the same situation where they have no AD carry? See, I don't know if the Ziggs was the reason they were losing last game at all. Yeah. No, no, I that's mean, fair. But like we were talking about how those comps are kind of pretty difficult to play out, right? Yeah, but you did get rid of the rid of the Nasus, so. It's not like... Yeah, I think with the Ziggs pick here, they can easily pick Corky 2-3. And if Jojo takes away the Corky right now, they will be looking to pick Zeri. So I think they will still get an AD carry in their comp. It's interesting, because Thunder Thieves, we obviously, you know, in their last series, they did a couple times where they had Ziggs bot and just paired it with melee mids, because yeah. that's kind of what Golden Glue was talking about. You know, trying to facilitate Quid. He saw him as a specialist on, you know, Yone, on Yasuo, Hi, on bro. these types of champions. So it'll be interesting to see if he does go towards that. Because, yeah, obviously the meta is more play Corky or Zeri or whatever and pair it with the Ziggs. But that doesn't seem like it's always Hunter Thief style. And we're going Iron here, yeah, actually. So, Inspired, I want to hear more about you because you're the you're the guy that was picking Iron into C9 and now they're picking it up themselves and early picking it. So, like, how do you view Iron with their comp and what would you go if you're 100 Thieves to pick against it? Um, I mean, I would pick... Uh, honestly, hmm. I mean against Ivern, you can either go AP jungler and try to out farm him because uh, Ivern can't really farm as well as AP junglers. So there will be a point in the game where, where you are really strong on champion like Brandt or Zyra. But uh, other than that, it's really hard to pick something to counter Ivern because uh, he's always going to scale, he's always going to do his job and he's always going to be solid in the game. So just early rotation of Ivern, you can't really punish that too hard. We don't see Corky coming in from either side, to be honest. Like, I know Quid was not playing Corky all throughout the season, pretty much. He was, like, you know, playing the Ezreal, playing the Zeri, playing the Smolder, playing so many other AD mids. Yeah. So I'm not really sure he prioritizes the uh, Corky. So I'm curious to see if even C9 prioritizes it because they picked um, Misfortune and NAR. So if they pick Corky, they're going to have pretty much no AP damage. I, I think they didn't pick Corky because they were scared of Zeri on 3. If they pick Corky here, then Jojo can just go Zeri for free. And I think that's why they weren't willing to pick Corky. And it seems like they just picked NAR to answer that, and they're saving the last pick for Jojo. C9, are you afraid of Ziggs as, a, as an actual flex? Because I feel like you're the only team that would be willing to flex it here. Uh, as a first pick, that would make it much stronger. Do you see Quid as more of a, like, as a Ziggs player? Uh, I have seen Quid in solo queue play it, mm -hmm. specifically bot lane, not mid lane. So I don't know how much he's willing to translate the roles, but I think Quid has a very expansive champion pool. So I think he, he would be willing if, you know, Tomo and Ayla are just like, this misfortune matchup is completely unplayable, you have to take it. But I don't think that's the case. I think it's just going to be going Tomo Ziggs. Okay. So Vi's gonna get banned out, the same thing River played last game, obviously MF a lot more susceptible to it, and Yasuo is the concern here for C9. Uh, 100 Thieves already banned out the Leona, obviously C9 needs some sort of lockdown from their support to set up the MF. Uh, the Rel is already gone, that's kind of primo pick. They're gonna ban out the Braum. They ban so Braum into the Valley Star. Yeah, I find that surprising, like an Alistar could come in here, or even like a Nautilus. I think either of those are probably the ones Vulcan can go for. I'm just honestly curious to see what Quid takes. 
I mean, I, I was expecting Diana Yasuo for five. I, I feel like the Yasuo ban is good. Like, honestly, looking at 100 T's draft, I was thinking maybe Diana Yasuo for five and try to one-shot the Ivern in teamfights. But uh, the Yasuo is banned out, so... Even with the Vi Yasuo, I was expecting it to be a quirky of four. Just like, because it's freeing it up a little bit, so they can pick it, and it's pretty nice into the comp that they already have. But like, but like they're saying, them. it's like 100 Thieves isn't really prioritizing Quirky a lot of time when they're playing it. When they are playing ADC, you know, APA was saying it goes oh, more the other the ones. Ezreal, the Smolder, whatever. Yeah, so, you know, picking your support three. here lets uh, JoJo have, have counter pick on five, right? It's yeah. like, if you're going to go red, let him have his, his pick of the matchup, and yeah, it is going to be Zeri mid. I think he just didn't want to play Quirky against Zeri, and now the Zeri is blind pick. So maybe we'll see JoJo on some mage, because Zeri struggles against mages quite heavily. Even against LeBlanc, I feel like... Maybe, maybe, maybe Jojo will try to try to play another game of the bank. Would you have a concern about you know there not being that kind of big carry, like hyper carry for Ivern to buff up if you do go towards you know, LeBlanc, that right? Because then it's like you just have MF with shields, basically. That is true. I mean, I'm not sure what will Jojo counter pick the Zeri with, but blind pick Zeri mid is a little bit cocky choice from yeah. Quid. It's it's tough though, right? Because it's like you're saying you want to avoid the Corky Zeri matchup, but There's Corky is kind of like what fits with the comp. If they go LeBlanc then you are a little bit light on sustained damage, I think. You know, that is maybe one of the possible concerns here from the Cloud9 composition. They are going to lock that in, and it puts a lot of onus, I think, on Berserker to be able to get those big ults. I think mostly on Jojo. If he doesn't win lane, uh, this LeBlanc is not going to be useful in the game. So yes, Same as game one. Like He, yeah. he kind of got nullified in lane, and he was not that useful. Mercer's Which comp do you guys prefer same. between the two? I don't like the LeBlanc pick. I like 100 Thieves way more. I think I feel like LeBlanc kind of cooked yeah. their draft. It was, if it was just double AD carry scaling from C9, I think they would just win yeah. through 5v5. I mean, in my opinion, C9 just didn't expect at all 100 Thieves to blind pick the Zeri. They were hoping the, that Quid will lock in Corky and they will get to they pick get Zeri last pick and have a hyper carry with Ivern, but they didn't have any other hyper carry to pick into the Zeri. Final thoughts, uh, APA? I think it's 100 Thieves' favorite draft. Yeah. All right, that sounds great to me. I'm looking forward to this draft. I'm looking forward to what the casters have to say on this one. I'm going to send it straight, guys, uh, straight to you guys. All right, game number three with a lot of similarities to game yeah. number one. We've got plenty of repeat champs on both sides. The big difference for me, Blabber instead of a Nidalee on a very different champ in the Ivern. Let's see if JoJo can redeem his LeBlanc as well. And Flowers, you and I were discussing between games that we want to see one of those JoJo games. We need yeah. to see this out of him in this world's qualification match as he moves forward or if he moves forward in these summer split playoffs. His LeBlanc did not look great the first time. It is a slightly different situation. And Kobe, we were talking a little bit about why they didn't just pick the hyper carry in the first place. So it's a little bit strange how we ended up here. Yeah, I think the analyst has kind of hit it a nail on the head there and Cloud9 felt a little bit awkward for their last pick. And I said it in game number one, I still feel this way. I think it's hard to play LeBlanc into point and click that's followed up by a bunch of AoE. Mm -hmm. Maokai can make LeBlanc's life really difficult later on into the game. And we saw it with Maokai into Rel plus Ziggs bombs over the top. It's like you point and click on her and then you have enough AoE that you can just splash damage on the area that she was, even if she has her passive available and just burst. Yep, I love that three champion combo. And now as we're, hold on, let's let's see if this turns into anything. Doesn't look like it probably will. 100 Thieves backing away from the enemy jungle now. Let's go ahead and toss things over to Emily, standing by with an interview with Golden Blue. Hello, I'm here with 100 Thieves coach Golden Glue. We thought something might happen a little bit at level one, uh, but not really. I want to talk to you through first blue side draft, right? What do you think your biggest adjustment that you wanted from the team going from the loss into this game? Um, I think the two big adjustments is uh, Bat Nasus, <laughs> and it seems like we have to lose that champion once per series. It's part of our ritual. And I think the other one was like, I think we had a little bit of lapse in focus when we, when they Rift Herald top and they killed two of us. We kind of, we didn't call a move and I think we just lost focus for a little bit. So I think overall we're playing well as a team. It was just like change draft up a little bit and then make sure we're staying focused the whole time. And then um, looking at, I guess, more of an overall picture, what do you think you did super well in game one that you'd also like the team to bring into this matchup? I mean, I think game one, we just played uh, pretty well in team fights and our positioning was really good. And even though we were a 5K goal down, we were still able to win team fights. So I think we feel really strong about our fighting ability. And I just want us to keep taking fights as much as we can. All right, well, your team doesn't seem to have a problem with that very often. We will send it back to live before one of those fights breaks out.
All right, no fights right now, but it is Quid with control over the mid lane, getting that wave shoved up. You can see similar stories being told for 100 Thieves on both side lanes as well as everything's getting all pushed up. But we have two of the most, um, what is the right word? Herbivorous? Herbivore, what? junglers, plants. <laughs> yeah, we got, plants. We, we got two literal plants in the jungle, so there's probably not a lot of invade that's going to come from this lane. Control. I think herbivores was the word you're saying. Yeah, I know, but I wanted to use it as a as an adjective. Yeah, like carnivorous, herbivorous. herbivorous. Yeah, <laughs> that's, uh, there, there's got to be an equivalent, man. All right, uh, I'm going to say that's not it, but <laughs> I 100% agree. <laughs> I 100% agree with the double trees. The thing with the double trees is that Ivern is the tree uh, that clears a little bit quicker. That's a word. It is correct. Yeah. Why does it's it a sound word. so weird? Of an animal? Jojo! On mid lane. Okay, that's carnivorous. That was downright carnivorous. That was downright diabolical in the mid lane. Jojo's on the board three minutes in. We will judge every play to be carnivorous or herbivorous, herbivorous. for this game. Okay. I love that. And I also love that Jojo steps up in this moment. This is what you want to see out of a mid lane counter pick when you go for the block. Screw needing a jungle gank. He just lands the chain, flash follows, and gets the kill. And it's not even with an ignite like game number one. He's back on teleport flash with the LeBlanc, so not even needing that extra little bit of damage. This is what we wanted to see when he saw when we saw him lock it in in game number one. It's a great start for the C9 mid laner. Even hitting him with the question mark in all chat, the classic flame. Yeah, that flame is oh topside. Yeah, they want to go in for this dive on Thanatos. Sniper with a slice and dice, but Thanatos cool and collected holds his summoner spells and only Sniper is forced to flash. Now River wants to go in after him. Wanted to flash Ooh. for the Bramble Smash. Twisted Advance is so good at dropping the tower aggro. 100 Thieves get what they came for. Well done there by River and Sniper. Stacking a gargantuan wave in front of Thanatos so they could get two tries at that dive. And that's the Renekton power. But we're going to see this solo kill one more time. The brush probably helped. Let's see how Jojo does this. Flash is also a kill summoner because you flash to keep the chain length, I'm assuming here. Jojo probably flashes Simple. before, and then Quid tried to flash after. So really nicely done there. Mid stead, nice. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good job. Nice, nice. Go flash. Flash is OP. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. You can tell there's a little bit of a chip on the shoulder yeah. there from yeah, the, uh, yeah, yeah. the guy last time. But yeah, as I was saying, like, flash is also a kill summer with LeBlanc, so you can ensure that you actually get the chain to land. And best world, he actually got the response flash from Quid. So they're going to have more repeat pressure around this lane. Vulcan shows first, but look at Ivern's here oh, too. Beautifully oh. done. Headbutt to the minion. Flash for the pulverized distance on Quid. Oh. But Zeri is still Zeri. Hopping over the wall there with the roller skates, the potion enough to keep him alive through the ignite. That was almost a classic LeBlanc moment, but preventing that second kill from coming through is actually pretty huge. The wave is in a very bad spot for Quid anyway, so Ayla would have loved to shove that in, but it will freeze. I think it's pretty crucial that Quid didn't go down for a second time because that lane would have definitely gotten out of control. So here's something interesting, differentiating this game from the first two. Look at how early C9 is taking this Drake. Previously, it was a trade Drake for Grubs. This time around, they might just get it for free before those even spawn. Yeah, a couple of knock-on effects. They can get an objective. And also, even though they didn't kill Zeri there, the minion wave, really bad for Zeri. Yeah. And so he still even loses out more. This LeBlanc got a really big experience advantage because they actually were able to keep the wave in the middle and a bunch of minions kept on dying while Quid had to go back to base. So now you see level six JoJo to level oh. five Quid and the chain doesn't hit. Wow, Quid, that was a I mean, very necessary little dodge there. Quid is playing with absolute fire right there. If he gets hit by that chain, he's probably dead one more time. But because he managed to go up there and dodge the chain, he's probably going to be able to hit six. And now he's not as fearful and might be able to get this next wave in. Okay, so as C9 was able to secure the first Drake, as we're now seeing River looking to get those first three grubs here for 100 Thieves, I also want to just comment really quickly on the fact that it's so easy for C9 to help JoJo because of the damage he has because of the lockdown that LeBlanc has, it's much more difficult to help Quid on the other side. JoJo is so elusive with the distortions, with the clone. Quid does not have any hard CC of his own. Returning the favor for 100 Thieves' side is difficult. Extremely difficult. So much of a mobility advantage over there on the JoJo side. Of course, still trying to remain aggressive, and you're going to see constantly 100 Thieves call up other members 
uh, to help this mid lane now. You mentioned it a lot in game number one, two flowers, but uh, you know, Ziggs allowing the rail roams as we see top side again another dive. They want to at least get him off this way. Vulcan has a really good timing on this yeah. support for Thanatos. Vulcan doing a good job being in the right place at the right time. They also have Blabber right behind him too. So C9 ready to respond to this. No dive's gonna come out. Yeah, I, I really like that Vulcan was there. I think so often with Thanatos, this split, they've left him on an island and he's usually completely okay. But that was a situation where he really needed someone to be there to catch that wave and keep him in the game. And it's a good thing Berserker has the strut move speed because he actually was up there too and walks all the way down with that extra move speed and only dropped one melee minion uh, in order to give that extra support. Still in the end, the three grubs over to side of 100 Thieves trade for the uh, original dragon that we had seen from Cloud9 uh, after their mid lane play. So they ended up trading those objectives. And now the classic control ward fight here where Daisy okay. gives the extra. Over the wall goes Vulcan. Headbutt pulverized, trying to go for Ayla, but Ayla is confident. He re-engages, thrown up into the air, flashing into the way of the bullet time, just barely staying alive, but it ain't gonna be enough. Jojo with the auto attack to finish him off. River wants to flash away, but Blabber wins the plant battle. C9, two for one. So Vulcan goes in a little bit early, but it's very nicely set up as they come up the river and Berserker's Misfortune Ultimate allows them to get an extra. They barely got the last one there too. Two for one, four cloud nine. Pretty small advantage, but they also retain the vision control between yeah. the corridor here. This is gonna be a constant topic where we talk about roams from bottom lane up to mid lane. So not only do they get the extra kill, but they also were able to secure their vision. Yeah, I think possibly Blabber really just wanted this crab. That's why he threw Daisy out so early. It's channeling that whole time. But really, as they're able to secre fight this 4v4, I'd say the Ivern and LeBlanc power is actually working pretty well here. Ivern, I really do think, is a difference maker in this series, keeping people alive on the outskirts of these fights. JoJo would have potentially had to back out of that fight had it not been for Blabber's presence. Nicely done there. Still a very close game overall between these two teams. Remember that today's winner takes on FlyQuest on Friday. TL is waiting on Saturday for the LCS Championship. We just opened up more tickets. If you want to see how the story of LCS Summer 2024 concludes live and in person, head on over to Riot.com slash LCS Championship to claim your seat at the theater. We will see you there. And we'll see Tomo get himself back after pushing up that wave in bottom. No extra risk to be taken. We're still about a minute away from either one of these neutral objectives spawning for the second time. And I like what Cloud9 are doing now. Because they have JoJo fed this time around with his early kills, he's got his Ludens already, so there's a big item advantage. They send him into the side lane, a longer lane here for LeBlanc to have room to work with uh, and try and pressure. So he can constantly push the wave first, because for Quid, it's very dangerous to move up. He just has his Merc Treads and his Vamp Scepter, and so JoJo gets so much freedom when you rotate him at the 10 minute mark here into the side lane off of his Ludens. He's going to be able to slowly get turret plate money, slowly get little advantages. Maybe you see a deep like jungle ward play uh, roaming to the rest of his team. But the Krugs are coming up very shortly with Jojo in the bottom lane as well. This is the type of fight that 100 Thieves really liked in that first game when they were able to point and click CC Jojo in the team fight. So I think there's also all the ultimates up for 100 Thieves and Sniper's in a good position up in this top lane. So just really look to see if 100 Thieves can turn something around here. Immediately though, Cloud9 letting the bullet time mm. rip, trying to force 100 Thieves back into their own jungle. As Tomo's still in pretty good shape overall here, but Cloud9 maintains control over the top side river. Sniper and Thanatos could both try to work their way towards this as Jojo jumps over the wall. River now having to retreat away from that one. Twisted advance onto a minion to try to escape the chain. Still ends up taking the damage well, from Sniper's the second part of the proc. Sniper's getting chased away by Thanatos, but now it's Vulcan locked up here. 100 Thieves CC doing a good job with the zap to the wall, trying to keep the rest of C9 zoned out. He's a tanky cow, but he's still going down. 100 Thieves get the one kill out of the skirmish. Really interesting fight there because Cloud9 thought they were going to preempt the fight when they had JoJo there early, but the combo doesn't land. And then when they're already down bullet time, it allows Hunter Thieves to kind of easily win this fight. This is what happened up in the top side to start this fight where Thanatos was trying to mark the Renekton, but he doesn't have Mega by the time this fight starts and Sniper can walk all the way through. Let's check out River 
dodging the original engage, which opens up Hunter Thieves' ability to engage onto Vulcan. Exactly, Jat. He dodges the first chain and then Ws the R chain. And that's all LeBlanc's, you know, kit basically right there used. <laughs> so that was the whole advantage that they got from the earlier play where we mentioned him push the wave in uh, onto Quid. And it actually did force Quid's teleport in order to join the fight. But because River's able to dodge the key abilities, that didn't end up mattering for yeah. Cloud9 and Hunter Thieves are so happy. That's five of the grubs, even though one was stolen away by Cloud9. They still get their grubs, and they're able to get the kill. Very good play on the herbivorous champions for real. I wouldn't <laughs> yeah. have expected this after what he's played all split. My man is cooking up some salad, and it's looking good. As C9 are going to secure what looks like the second Drake without any sort of a contest. And at the end of the last game, I said 100 Thieves, they live by River, they die by River. His first game on the Maokai was so good. His second game on the Vi was so not. And it looks like he's back in game one mode here again in our third head-to-head -head between these two. All right, so Captain Flowers starting the petition. Keep River on Maokai. <laughs> he seems like a Maokai player. He seems like he's dialed in on the tree. That's uh -huh. the one for me. That's my pick. That's my guy right there. Yeah, I mean, some of the cool plays to watch with Maokai are always like, what can you dodge with your Twisted Advance? Or what can you get uh, with your flash engages or your flash knockbacks with your Q? Let's take a look, though, as they transition everybody to topside. Thanatos going for the Mega Nar into Ooh. the wall, locks up Ayla while also killing the wave, which means that Ayla takes a ton of damage from the turret and then has to flash away from the boulder toss in order to not die. Nice free pickup on a really critical enemy summoner spell there from Thanatos. And because he managed to trade so much damage, JoJo gets to free hit this mid lane turret. I will say Renekton's free hitting the bot lane turret as well, so we're really just generating gold throughout the map. Trading some turret Max plates here. Platage. Now, Renekton in the mid game can become a fearsome tool, but not quite yet. And we'll see about the LeBlanc, because this is what we really have had a magnifying glass on. This has been yeah. the, mm -hmm. the controversial pick from game number one. And since JoJo was able to start this one out with the solo kill, with the trash talk of the question mark even, mm -hmm. uh, to get him back in mentally as well, uh, we're really looking at that being a pivotal point for Cloud9. Mid-game, vision control, looking for the classic LeBlanc brush plays and uh, pick attempts. Okay, Rift Herald has spawned. By the way, I was informed, you can see the sub thing on the screen right now, Enero gifted 50. Nick Enero Smith. Oh, thanks, bud. Coaching legend of the LCS. Bald brother to you and I. <laughs> so this is, man is he getting a shout work. out because he's your friend or because he gifted 50? Both. <laughs> anyway, let's see what gets gifted here with his Herald. It looks like Cloud9 ain't giving nothing to nobody as 100 Thieves are just gonna take it by force. C9, still trying to get test a little bit though. Harold Eyeball picked up by Quid on the Zeri. We'll see where they can end up dropping this. Want to draw your attention to the gold differences right now. The oh, biggest Ayla. gold differences is still JoJo. He was on And war. that is why he can grab the kills so easily like that. But Quid's looking to put some pain right back into him. JoJo's going to lose the clone. Nature's Grasp does not find him. 100 Thieves won't get anything back. And at the same time, Cloud9 takes the tier one down in the bottom lane. But now the Herald's summoned up. Quid's going to commit that one to the tier one here in the top lane. Honestly, didn't even really need it, but they're just going to use it anyway. And that, uh, <laughs> all right. Whoopsies. Uh, uh, okay. We're going to have to, we're going to have to go back to the DMV, work on that one a little bit longer, but uh, Harold didn't really go too far there on the, the drive. Still got the turret. I Still think that was a strange play, though, because I think 100 Thieves really wanted to be on the same page of we're just going to brute force our way up to the top lane. We have the Herald. He's going to respect it, and we're going to be able to to just get this turret for free. But JoJo had other ideas. Because he's accelerated on this LeBlanc, and because you're really not playing against LeBlanc that often, I think Ayla just completely forgot about the insane LeBlanc burst, and JoJo kind of gets a kill for free there. It's the classic where you're always hunting support players towards this mid game when you have your Ludens, when you have your, your yeah. burst potential, uh, because they are going to be the squishiest. And even in that play, he had a no magic mantle in his inventory, but mm. still. Popped 100% to zero there by JoJo. Three kills now for him in the LeBlanc. Still 100 Thieves right back to the same game plan. Get these outer towers down. Top side was taken care of. Mid lane, though, uh, actually able to push him off as the rest of 100 Thieves are also coming up the river. But they still got the bottom outer turret, too. And I think that's important that Tomo can stand there even when JoJo jumps on him, hit him right back, and force him to, to go ahead and 
take a more defensive approach because as soon as Jojo's just in pure carnivore mode, munching on anybody that comes near him, that's when LeBlanc is impossible to control. Tomo's still pretty strong right now. Seraph's embrace, first completed item, also really big for surviving some of this burst. Mm. Liking that choice. I'm really looking forward to the next Drake fight because I think that's going to be the tipping point of this game. And you okay. really need to have a magnifying glass on JoJo and River because if River or even Sniper can point and click CC JoJo, that's the majority of C9's goal lead it feels like in this game with the 3-0 bountied up LeBlanc. And pre-fight, JoJo needs to be playing on the edges. He needs to be landing the CC to poke them. And there he goes, Tomo surviving thanks to the <sighs> Seraphs as he gets away from the bullet time. C9 might not have got the kill, but they force the flash. They take the Ziggs down to just barely over 200 HP. It's a really good omen with only 15 seconds left before that Drake spawns. Tomo does not have teleport, so he's gonna have to walk all the way back out here as Cloud9 establishes control over the middle of Summoner's Rift. LeBlanc with the classic brush plays, but now there's more brush on the rift and they go even further. They're looking to lock up Ayla. They force the crash down defensively. His hundred thieves are again always on the retreat. Jojo playing this LeBlanc aggressively. There's the W. Again. Ayla taking a ton of damage, but now the Wombo combo from hundred thieves shuts them down. Just like game one, hundred thieves combos their area of effect and forces Cloud9 back. Point and click plus AOE, dead LeBlanc. River has had enough. The herbivores are striking back, Flowers. And they are doing it with violence, my friend. Let's take another look. JoJo had been doing so much work earlier on in this fight, getting the poke down, but it literally is as simple as C champ, press W on champ. He can't snap back because the CC gets completely chained. 100 to zero, goodbye LeBlanc. Just like we drew it up. Then let's see what else they're able to get in the rest of it. Because 100 Thieves afterwards were able to get a bunch of health bars off of Cloud9. They pushed them out. Golden Glue is All right, hyped. He's hyped. He that is was... used. I love the contrast between Golden Glue and Joseph Jang, who's just sitting back there, arms crossed, like very stoic. <laughs> They're like, okay, okay, we're cool. And Golden Glue is just hyped for it, man. Berserker popping the cleanse, Whoa. trying to escape from the ruthless predator of Sniper. C9, all five ready to go here. Keep looking for something. Tomo's not there yet. Ayla's all the way back in the base. 100 Thieves knows there is no chance to try to turn this. C9's gonna keep their guys safe. Berserker now with no summoners for whatever the next fight may be. And they might be able to get a lot of mid turret damage off this because the way C9 tried to loop around and Sniper backed up, they're gonna have some free time on this turret. Can they get it into satchel range will be the question. Okay, here we go. 100 nice thieves, move. knocking it down. Easy pick up there with a tier one. Turret over a thousand gold lead now for the thieves. Thieves, the thieves, the thieves. Now turn your resources towards the top half of the map. Baron is spawning. You have really, really good team fight. You're looking uh, at the Zeri to get a little bit more money to finish off item number two here, but he's going back to base right now. So we'll see how much in inventory Quid actually has. And Sniper's able to push out the rest of the lanes. I mean, from here on out, you go with the straightforward group up. Herbivores in front <laughs> have River at the ready, and you put a stop to the annoying playstyle of the distortion poke. Uh, as is kind of evidenced by game number one and the classic here. There you go. Quid was able to get his Runon's Hurricane. So Zeri is team fight ready. Okay. You've got the AOE available to you as well with the extra uh, shards that come out there. And Tomo's got the magic damage covered. He really does. And Quid has also made it through the early game. He now has a 300 goal lead on Jojo. And speaking of Jojo's LeBlanc, he's got to be feeling the pressure right now just because of his history in playoffs since joining the LCS, as we might see a fight. Ooh, that was a max range root caller, but Ayla gets far enough away to safety that C9 does not want to overcommit onto a realm. But Jojo had such a great start to the LCS, winning his first split with EG back in 2022, but since then has consistently fallen short, last split especially third place, getting swept out of the playoffs, and if this ended up being a fourth after the hype behind this entire team and the hype of C9 acquiring the former MVP in Jojo, it would be considered a disaster so Jojo really wants to perform here in this game yeah I mean you even heard we replayed a previous interview with him and APA during the break for anybody who missed it as APA was asking him whether or not he choked or whether or not they mm -hmm. sucked back in spring Jojo said I don't know man it doesn't really matter but if I miss international completely this year I might as well just retire in his Whoa. brain he didn't even think it was possible that he wouldn't make worlds but yeah. 
if they lose this game, which they are falling behind, they would be one game away from being eliminated and having 100 Thieves go in their place. Yeah, I feel like that's one of those statements you kind of throw out in the moment, but I don't actually think. <laughs> no, I right, but think you it, it just shows that the pressure's on, yeah. right? It shows that like, hey, there's expectations. These guys were supposed to be the super team in spring that everybody else was competing for silver medals against. They didn't even get to go to MSI. We sent two dudes. They weren't either dude. And there's a reason why I just keep harping on the Maokai because it's always the point and click that mm -hmm. makes the AOE work. Like JoJo can outplay a, a lot of the rest of the stuff that's been killing him. It's just the Maokai, so they has to track that, and he can still go for aggressive plays on the map. Just has to be wary of River. Ooh, Sniper sliced over the wall and then started channeling his teleport to immediately join up with the rest of 100 Thieves who are starting a very, very aggressive Baron. C9 has pretty much everybody ready to respond here. Thanatos does not have his teleport, though, so he has to walk all the way up from the bottom lane the normal way. Jojo, chased the down by the twist in advance yet again. He's caught out yet again. River on the Maokai marks his man, and he gets him every time. All right, how about this? Omnivore. <laughs> he's a lot of herbivore, but he's also got some carnivore in him. That one, the twisted advance, guaranteed to follow, and Quid also trying to follow. Quid Whoa. going in with a lightning crash very aggressively as Berserker is stuck on the side now against Sniper. He has to use the cleanse. He has to use the flash just to get away. Absolutely love that aggression from Sniper, seeing an angle when the objective isn't up yet when he wouldn't kill him, but just getting those summoner spells away from Berserker make it so much easier for 100 Thieves to secure this second Drake and really pull ahead in the game. Yeah, honestly, at this point, it's very rough, but we see the uh, Nar going back, and Nar also has teleport, so Cloud9 very well may just run straight. Yeah, Tomo's in a lot of trouble here as JoJo wanted to jump in on them both. Of these mage is going to take some serious damage there as Jojo distorts away from the minefield. 100 Thieves just want to get this Drake and get out. They still don't have the cooldowns back for a lot of those tools, those resources they used in the initial pick onto Jojo. They will secure themselves the Drake, however. Cloud9 might have got the first two, the Thieves got the next. And I know because of the expectations we've set, most of this conversation would be about C9 choking or JoJo not performing to expectations, but I gotta give credit to 100 Thieves. Yeah. They are playing very well. River is completely on point with when he engages, and the team is so good about following him up. On top of that, they're playing side lanes well. Sniper's not getting picked off like he was earlier in the year. Quid staying safe. They are just playing very solid League of Legends. And I gotta say, we just saw in the, that replay, JoJo is the one playing with fire. He queued yeah. the Maokai over the back of the pit. We, we we're like, that's the one you gotta keep your eyes on and watch out for and make plays elsewhere. And he went right up to him and poked the tree. Okay, let's take stock of what we've got here. Cause C9 did use both teleports to try to get in position to maybe stop that Drake take previously from 100 Thieves. It didn't work out. Quid has his teleport. Sniper's gonna have his here pretty soon. That'll be a macro advantage for the side of 100 Thieves. C9 is grouped up as a unit, trying to use the Ivern brushes to push into the top side river, make enough space to claw back some of this vision. But 100 Thieves are fighting him tooth and nail in the battle for wards. And we just need to keep our eyes on Jojo and River. River wouldn't have Flash this time, but if he can get in W range, they're gonna go. Nothing just yet. A little bit of poke. Sniper's not hidden away on a flank angle either. They can huh? know where he's at. Jojo. <laughs> Jojo knows that. Ah. Jojo knows there is a target on his back, his front, his forehead, everywhere. Again, the the real live Cloud9 reactions is Jet, Jet's like leg came all the way yeah. up over the desk. That was spooky. I mean, the fact that Quid is confident enough to just E over like that. Ooh, Thanatos and Vulcan, though, think they might have found a potential pick. Sniper's down to one third HP. Sterex Gage gonna pop, but immediately they turn it right back <laughs> onto JoJo. There is one plan every damn time. I take it back. It's not just the Maokai. Ayla <laughs> here with the Q flash is not on my watch either. Okay, Whoa. so here's the teleport thing I'm talking about. Sniper is looking for a recall right now, but he still doesn't quite have the cooldown on the Unleashed TP. 100 Thieves is starting up the Baron, but they're very slow about it here early on, and River is still gravely injured. 
There's no bullet time to stop this Baron, so they'd have to slow walk a Daisy in and maybe try and get it. I think they're just going to trade mid turret and give up the Baron. No contest. And critically, you can see Sniper sitting in the fountain, waiting on the last couple of seconds of the TP, but he's also waiting to see if he even needs to. He's not going to commit it. 100 Thieves don't even have to spend that resource. What a huge swing for them. I would bet my life that we don't see any more LeBlanc in this series, at least on the side of Cloud9. He's taken out of the game. He has 196 CS now, 27 minutes in. He's 80 CS down against the Zeri, and he is the weak point of this team. It's the one target that everyone on 100 Thieves saves all their cooldowns for. Watch Ayla here. He goes to poke Ayla. Hey, Ayla's also had enough. Woo! This, this, flash. this game is revenge of the herbivores. I think this game would actually qualify as professional therapy for anyone who doesn't like playing against LeBlanc. This is just feel-good moment after feel-good moment if you do not like playing against LeBlanc, because 100 Thieves have this guy downloaded. They got him saved on three different hard drives. They're making a PowerPoint presentation on how to shut this dude down. Merc Treads and Scimitar on the Zeri, so he can't get one shot. They have the Verdant Barrier on the Ziggs. Everyone has some level of LeBlanc durability at this point. All right, let's see if 100 Thieves can close it all out, seal the deal. JoJo trying to step up here, threatened with the distortion. Bullet time flies through. Sniper's going to take it down to damage. Quinn is already almost dead. They aren't going to find him instead. It's just JoJo yet again. Even when Cloud9 looks like they might find something, they miss by inches, and JoJo pays the price. That's unreal. The, we need to... I, every, all eyes are on Quid, and then JoJo dies. That's just... How does this keep happening? 100 Thieves, man. They understood the assignment. Now with the teleport coming out, they're going to put Sniper back in the bottom lane. The remainder of the team continues pushing together as a four-man unit back in mid. And now it's a pincer assault on both mid and bottom lane tier three turrets at the same time. I saw 17 life on Quid. And he survives it. And now 100 Thieves take half of Cloud9's base in one fell swoop. I saw zero life on JoJo. Well. <laughs> I also saw that. That's yeah. a pretty, and that's been the story number. of this game. It's over half of the kills for 100 Thieves. And they're easily taking this base because C9 actually has no way in. And I'm glad you mentioned that Verdant Barrier earlier on Tomo. Right there, they ended up using it. JoJo has to jump in once just to pop the thing. Then he has to wait for the cooldown to go back in for his real engage. He continues taking poke. He can't get the targets he needs. When he finally has a chance, Tomo's then ready to flash away because there's no other threat onto the back line. 100 Thieves take two inhibs. They're up 5,000 gold. Look at the replay, the counter engage from Ayla. The bullet time yeah. just almost able to finish off Quid, but not quite. And it's the counter engage from Ayla and River that locks them up. I mean, Sniper tanked basically an entire bullet time as well on the Renekton here. Yeah. The Sterics gauges are incredibly powerful as now. It looks like Vulcan's your target. 100 Thieves willing to commit onto the enemy's support. A little bit more damage will bring them down, and there it is. Finally, it's somebody not named JoJo, but they ain't done yet. Another one comes through as Blabber drops. Thanatos trying to stand and defend. C9 get a couple back, finally, but the fight's still going the wrong way. Thanatos locked up by Sniper. Tomo needs a little bit more damage over the wall, but he ain't quite going to find the skill shots just yet, so an even two for two. Weirdly, probably the best fight Cloud9 has had this entire game because Berserker got a lot of value out of his bullet time and C9 was actually able to kite out a little bit. The fight didn't start with JoJo just getting one shot, but I think we should talk a little bit about how these comps like can execute and how C9 doesn't have many tools outside of the JoJo poke because this would almost be the ideal fight for Berserker where everyone is in a choke point and he gets to channel for at least a little bit. Yeah, they sent a lot on him, and Ivern doing his best there to try and keep everyone up. But again, the root, like the forward momentum of the 100 Thieves comp, and Maokai here just running forward with Ayla. I feel like Rel and Maokai is just too strong of engage. It is mm. so easy for them to just force, even if they're going forward into MF Ultimate. Really nicely done by, by 100 Thieves again. And this is really shaping up to be far more exciting than I think most people thought coming into oh, it. Yeah. Everyone had voted Cloud9 in a 3-1 or a 3-0 or some variation of that, but 100 Thieves here are on the brink of actually pushing them to elimination game.
This is a bit of a weird sequence though right now with Hunter Thieves taking a bunch of vision on the top side, probably looking to break that third inhibitor, which could leave a window for C9 to prevent this dragon, but it actually seems like C9 is wanting to prevent this backdoor inhibitor. Let's go back to the interview that Emily had with Golden Glue at the start of this game. He said, we lost focus in the mid game, that play around the turret in the top side, we didn't communicate right, and that's what 100 Thieves is gonna have to do correctly in this game to finish it out. Clean communication as they try to continue this push here into the top lane, tier three turret, the Maokai ulti flies out, the lock up onto Thanatos, but it ain't enough to kill him. Magnet strong from Ayla locks up everybody, drags them all to their demise. Bullet time, plus the turret takes out the 100 Thieves support, but River is not done. He'll trade his life away as they continue the chase. Vulcan is eliminated, and the super minions are marching in from the previously claimed inhibitors that were taken in bot and mid. First Nexus turret is already down, and the second is in the sights of 100 Thieves. Quid's getting jumped on by Thanatos, but he's got the shield bow. He's still alive, he's still firing. He still don't care. Cloud9 are pushed to the brink and 100 Thieves are one game away from Worlds. What a performance in game three by 100 Thieves. Nobody but 100 Thieves expected to be at this moment right here. The top three teams in the, L in the LCS have been clearly above all of the others up until this point. 100 Thieves trying to ascend. Incredible, incredible games one and three from the Thieves so far. That was just a beautiful montage of finding the enemy carry and executing again and again and again with game three wrapped up. Azale, Emily, what do you got for me? We got some draft haters yeah. over here uh, at the at the lounge. Man, that LeBlanc pick, I just think cooked their whole draft. It looks so hard to play. You had no hyper carry for Ivern to facilitate at all. That draft just looked rough. Yeah, I think with the uh, with the Ivern early pick coming in from C9, I think you really want like that stable, like pretty much just ADC mid lane. You know, like we're thinking the Zeri, Smolder, um, Corky type picks. And then I think JoJo picks LeBlanc. He picks it to smash lane. But then I think even though he did win lane, like he started off the game 3-0. Mm -hmm. um, still local even. Yeah. He it's just so hard to pilot LeBlanc that game. Like you're in a Maokai, you're in a Rel, like so much target CC, even the Renekton, like flash W stun. Um, it's just so hard to play LeBlanc that game. And even though he got pretty far ahead of Quid, it's just not that useful of a pick. And then it kind of like makes your draft super weird because you have no more consistent damage for your Ivory to play around. I just think Cloud9's read is, is very strange throughout all the playoffs. You know, they came into the last series and coming out of that, they said, oh, we had the wrong read on playoffs. You know, we're going to we're gonna change things up for this series. Coming into here, it just feels like they're really hyper fixated on dominating early game. You know, in game number one, we saw the Nidalee, Renekton, LeBlanc. This game, we see you know, LeBlanc again instead of just rounding out your draft with a hyper carry. Uh, it's kind of surprising. Yeah, I'm not sure what to... I mean, I don't know. I hope they realize why they lost this game. Like, uh, <laughs> I think that draft started fine. I think they should have looked to pick Hypercarry a bit earlier because they, they should know they are a better team, so they will always get to scale. Like, I really think they need to look into more scaling in their comps. So this is game number one. We're just going back through the series. If you guys missed the series so far, game number one, Cloud9 again went for a very strong early game comp. Obviously, Nidalee, Renekton, um, they did the LeBlanc even with uh, no flash with the Ignite, and they tried to really snowball the early game, but weren't able to do it. Yeah, and the big difference to me, since we have our like resident Ziggs aficionado <laughs> here, is obviously 100 Thieves have such a high priority on this pick. Ziggs is an incredibly strong pick, and I think they've been piling it pretty well. Um, what do you think C9 should do to kind of try to deal with the Ziggs? As we saw, like even in this fight, they tried to jump on him. He's actually able to flash out, and then so much of C9, you guys cover this in the post game here, is already sucked into this team fight where yeah. they just take tons of damage. So to me, honestly, after watching three games, I think they've played three games now of MF Ziggs. I feel like they should just ban it because I personally have a very high opinion of Berserker. I think he's very good. I think they played Kai'Sa game two. And oh, game, Kaisa, three, game three, the Kai'Sa was banned one to three. Yeah. And we already predicted that Ziggs is going to be first pick, but yeah. C9 just egot completely and left the Ziggs go for I, I feel like they should just ban it and then make Tomo, in a sense, have to play the lane. Because Ziggs is so good at nullifying, and I feel like if you're able to nullify Berserker, who is like supposed to be able to carry the series through Bok App, it's just making the series super weird when you're picking, to me, just like weird mid lane picks.
Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of people coming in here, you know, thought that Cloud9 just has individually stronger players. So if you just play like a stable draft that has mm -hmm. some pretty good scaling, you'd win out in team fights, you'd have advantages early game just kind of naturally. Um, but the game is going a very different way. And, you know, Cloud9 are kind of painting themselves into a corner in both game one and three where they had to create these big advantages and they just weren't enough. Game two felt like the only <laughs> game where they actually could just kind of scale and that's yeah. the one they won. Uh, I mean, this game was just like, to me, it was just the NASA show. Like, the, you picked Garen Mid and Asus to counterpick it, but in all reality, it looked like the Garen was completely useless throughout the entire game. And then Asus just got to stack up freely. And, uh, like, to me, it feels like these games are just coming down to comps. Like, it feels like no team is playing completely better than the other. It's just coming down to which draft seems better. Yeah, and then this one, we had, like, the Vi pick coming through. I understand that's probably because 100 Thieves really wanted River to be on something with Engage. We've seen how good in his two Maokai games he is at choosing when to go in. Um, but that was the big draft piece for me that really, like, fell short uh, in this red side draft from 100 Thieves. And then we also saw Quid make a few mistakes on Garen that kind of ended up leading to this massive NASA snowball. And I've got to say now, you know, this is one of those series where I think sometimes when you're a big underdog, you can come in and you're just like, ah, oh, let's just like do our best. Let's just play. You play a little bit more relaxed. C9 has got to be sweating so hard now. They're mm -hmm. one yeah. game from missing <laughs> worlds. Yeah. You know, JoJo was so confident in, in the face-to-face -face with you <laughs> that he literally said, I will retire if we lose the 100 Thieves. Yeah. And this is after a spring split that was already a pretty big disappointment for Cloud9, where, you know, everyone had them power ranked as number one. They did not really pan out at all in spring. Summer, they come in, they're having a really good regular season. They finished second, and it looked like the top three were so much better than the rest of the teams. They are one Just game choking. away from the, wor the world's yeah. ticket uh, being gone. I don't think anyone in the predictions had even 100 Thieves taking two games. Nope. nope. And we're, after game three, 100 Thieves is 2-1 up in the series. So it's like very worrying for if you're a C9 member. Like you're so nervous at this stage that you're supposed to be heavy favorites, but what looks like their prep and what looks like their drafts are just not working. So they have to change things up. In my and opinion. they also showed us against FlyQuest that sometimes they're willing to just kind of stick to the same draft the whole way through, right? You know, I do think that's something that Reaper has done a lot throughout his career is that, you know, he, ha he believes in his prep and he believes that it's very execution based a lot of times. Um, you know, against FlyQuest and they lost to you guys, they played four Corkies, four uh, Cassantes in a row. Here, they're obviously really dialed in on the LeBlanc. Um, it'll be interesting to see if they go to it again. By contrast, I think one interesting thing that we've seen out of 100 Thieves, uh, in addition to the Ziggs Cryo, is the fact that they've picked a lot more stable compositions, especially when they have been able to lock in the Maokai, as we see, again, another example of how useful that champ can be within uh, 100 Thieves compositions and also how good River is at sometimes choosing when to go in on the Maokai. And I think um, it's really different than what we saw from them against Dignitas, right? Where they were going for these like hard dive comps. And at the beginning when we all three of us were talking about like, oh, how do 100 Thieves take a game? We were like, I think they have to just do something insane, right? They have to pick a dive comp, they have to snowball it super well. That's not what's actually happened in these drafts for the 100 Thieves wins. I also think it's interesting, we've been talking a lot. I'm just such an MF hater, man. You are. I just, I just think <laughs> this champion hater. is so garbage. It needs so much setup, I feel like, to succeed. And I feel like in almost every team fight, we just see Berserker pop out an ult, it like hits someone, they flash out of it, and then he's just strafing and not able to do anything. And you, know, you put this person on, on a hyper carry, you put him on Zeri, you early pick something like that, and we've seen so many times for Cloud9 how he can take over games. But you guys, I know, do like MF. I do like MF, but yeah. I agree with you. I think if you have Berserker on your team, just pick him Zeri, and <laughs> go, go kill them. Pentacle Pikachu. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Well, uh, we are going to be going into game number four here pretty shortly. Cloud9 selected blue side. Their year is on the line. We're headed to a break, but game four coming up next. Yo, Berserker, come on, yeah, yeah. I'm looking, I'm looking. Yeah, yeah. Coming, coming, coming. Yeah, yeah, look at look at the flash. Yeah. Look look Phil. Exalt. I'll be in a few seconds, Phil. Run the flash. Yeah. Run one HP. I'm chain, I'm chain. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Zero ult is still on. No flash. Nice. Back, 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 back. Can we take this? Yeah, I gotta look, I gotta look here. I gotta look. I gotta look. I'm gonna look 
blow up backline one time. If you go in, I can just go on. Look at me, look at me. Yeah, we can. We can fight here, guys. Over there, over there. Okay, Megan, 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 we can fight, we can fight, come, come. Yeah. Look, 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 Okay, not bad actually. Okay, I use her. Okay, I use her. Okay, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Don't care about try it. Try to try to like. The bank no alt. He does no damage. Well, look, 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 one time. Nar. I can go. Happy HP. Help, build guys. I'm at fault. It's good. Too it's dead, good. Too dead. Yeah. I, I'm gonna look this fortune. You guys can play in game. No flash MF. Just heal Alice. Alice. You can yeah. keep going. Alice. 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 Okay, MF. Here, it's only Lots enough, guys. Just K, K, K. Lots of Just We can win. We can win. Just break, 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 break. 